Brianne, and I'm here with Pete and Moore Kennedy at Just Music Coffee House in Ponds and Lakes. How are you guys? We're, we're great. Great. Just really played the show, and uh, am I supposed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Let's start since we're so close. We're not. Um, okay, that's great. So you guys are have a really great relationship with your fans. Um, do you like the, per the like really personal approach to your music, or would you rather be a little aloof? No, I, I no. This is like I think of these shows as is the essence of our social life, you know. And and our fans are so many of them are our friends. Um, we've been doing this a long time, and um, we have a real a real good back and forth kind of relationship right. with our audience to the point where you know we can come on stage and say you know if you want to hear a certain song just yell it out and they will you know people feel really comfortable yeah. doing that and so it, it makes for a really relaxed kind of environment which I think is a good kind of environment when you play, yeah. play music. I believe so. Mm -hmm. um, okay speaking of your fans is there anything specifically that sticks out in either of your minds that someone has ever said to you about your, yeah. their, your music or something that you've played or any specific gift or something that a fan has given you? Oh, all the time. Um, maybe the, the biggest one for me is um, we were playing in Maryland a few years ago and a woman came up after the show and she said, you saved my life. And I, I said, I don't even know you. How did I save your life? And she said, uh, I was living in Africa. I was in a very abusive relationship and I turned on the radio and you were on Voice of America. It's a, um, international show, it was taped in Washington, we had taped it, um, and she heard the show and we sang our song Life is Large, which is a really empowering kind of song, mm -hmm. and she said it kind of, it was a wake up call for her, and she left this abusive guy, got on an airplane, it left all of her stuff, mm -hmm. flew back to the States, um, reunited with her high school sweetheart, and lived happily ever after, but she was, she said that she was like on the verge of suicide, so if a, if a song has that kind of power, mm -hmm. I mean, that, it, it, and you hear a story like that and you think it's such a gift that she, she even shared that with mm -hmm. me. So who knows what other stories are out yeah. there. You know, you write a song and you figure it's going to find its own way. It's mm -hmm. sort of out of your hands at that point. But every now and then you'll get a story like that that makes you feel like you're on the right path. Yeah, it's great to hear back from someone who was affected by a song. That really, it, it gives more impact than we were doing. Yeah. Alright, so you both have recently come out with your solo CDs. Um, after being known as the Kennedys for so long, uh, what's it like to have material out there with just your individual name on it? Well, I mean, Pete has done solo CDs in the past. In fact, when I first met him, how many records did you have out under the name Pete Kennedy? I think about seven or eight. Seven or eight. And I'd never, uh, I'd never done it. So for, for Pete's, pro Pete's answer is probably different than mine. For me, it's, it was really scary at first but it's really empowering for me now. I mean, I, I was always afraid of even the notion of getting up on stage by myself, but I find that uh, not only can I do it without fear, which was a pretty amazing discovery to make, but I really enjoy it too, mm -hmm. I really do, and it's another, um, it's just, it just broadens the field for me. Yeah. I, I just like playing music in any context. You know, I've played in big orchestras, and and played solo, um, you know, so from 100 people to one person. And so, you know, I love doing a duo thing. I'm very happy anytime I'm you know, playing, mm -hmm. playing music, especially for you know, Dizzy Gillespie, a great um, jazz trumpeter, once said, um, uh, he told a friend of ours, play music for someone every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great way to live. Excellent. Um, did you have any, like, dramatic reactions from fans when you came out and said, well, I'm going to do this? I, well, Pete, I don't think did because, as I said, he's done solo stuff before. There were some early questions like, oh no, does this mean it's the end of the Kennedys? And I said, no, it's just we're very creative people. Um, we're very supportive of each other in our different, in our combined and our separate musical endeavors. And I think once people realize that it's not replacing the Kennedys, it's yet another aspect yeah. of what we do. I mean, we had the Strangelings, mm -hmm. and we did an album that was our kind of folk rock band. We had the String Busters, which was our ukulele swing duo, and the solo stuff is just another another aspect of what we, what we do. Um, so when you do have a, you answered this a little bit before, but when you do have a solo show, like how does it feel to be up there and? <laughs> all of well, I'll answer that because it's it's different for me. But um, it, like I said before, it, it was totally scary the first time I did it. And the first time I did it, 
first few times I did it, I did it strictly by myself mm -hmm. with no backup. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Pete actually pushed me to the, to the lake when I was, because I was writing these songs. And where were we? Was it in, in uh, Pauling, New York, I think was the first time. And he said, you know, you should do one of your new solo songs. I'll just leave the stage. He didn't give me time to think about it. Mm -hmm. And so I got up there and uh, was petrified. But I, I couldn't believe that I actually got through it. So um, yeah, no, I, I, I've grown to love it. Really going to love it. It's great. It's just very different. Um, it's like if you were um, interviewing us with, and your best friend was sitting next to you, mm -hmm. also doing the interview, you would interact with us, but also with her mm -hmm. or him. And um, um, in this case, you're interacting just with us. So imagine that with a hundred mm -hmm. people. You know, so instead of sharing the experience with one other person, you're completely the focal point. Mm -hmm. So that could go either way. It could make you a lot more nervous. Or else it can make you a lot more comfortable once yeah. you realize that you have a rapport with 100 people at the same yeah. time. That's a, that's, that's a great feeling, actually, and she said into it. And I think that's one of the things that surprised me, that one of the things I discovered, because when we're in the duo, we're totally playing mm -hmm. to each Definitely. other. Um, and I found that um, I can very easily play solo to an audience and, you know, have kind of real... Um, Casual interaction with them as though they were, you know, just next to me. So, and I never did that before in the Kennedy. So that yeah. that's a, a cool aspect of the performance thing to discover about yourself. Great. All right. Um, I'm sure you guys are asked all the time who writes the music and who writes the words. For you, when you're listening to music, which is more important to you, the music or the lyrics? Why? Well, for me, I like a really wide range of music, including a lot of things that don't have lyrics, mm -hmm. classical music and jazz and stuff like that. So I'm listening to music like that. I think I respond to the melody more than anything else. And um, I also grew up, you know, playing rock and roll in garages, where you're singing bee bop a loop bop a lop bam boom tutti frutti. <laughs> so obviously the lyrics <laughs> literally don't mean anything, yeah. but they have a great groove, and you can dance to them, mm -hmm. and there's just something about rock and roll that the whole picture fits together. So I'm, I'm oriented around that, like the whole thing. You know? For me, I would say the melody is key. Mm -hmm. I, I love great melodies. <laughs> and, um, and also, the sound of a record. Like, there's certain bands, I just love the sound that they get, you know, um, the production sound. Um, like the Fleet Foxes, I mean, I, you can't take just the melody or just the lyrics or just, you know, it's just the sound. Um, and there's a, a bunch of bands like that. that I, that's how I listen for the sound. Second, maybe, in the melody first. Lyrics, just the third. I mean, I like, the, I like good lyrics. When, when you get a good sound and a good melody and then you put in a great lyric, yeah. then, it's, then it's, you know, bonus. But um, I don't really need a, a great lyric. I mean, I listen to African music. I don't know what the lyrics mean, but they've got great melody. 